about 20 years ago, a group of us were getting more and more concerned about how we were losing, still losing our wildflower meadows and all the diversity that's within them. So many had been ploughed and reseeded for agriculture. People were planting trees on them or just mowing them non-stop. In 2003, we held a meeting at Trellick and invited local landowners along. And that really was the start of the, the Meadows Group. The whole aim of the Meadows Group is getting to know local people, them joining the group. We go out and do an initial survey and see what they've already got. And then we advise them how to either manage it or to restore it as a wildflower meadow. Here, you've got a member who leaves part of her lawn, which is brilliant, uncut. Nature doesn't like tidiness. And although many people will think this is untidy and a mess, it's not. It's just superb in the spring when all the flowers are at their best. But when we first moved here, it was a good opportunity to sort of keep the meadows as meadows. And I was really fortunate to be introduced to the Monmouthshire Meadows group. They advised us what to do because we've got a partnership with Gwent Wildlife Trust. It's easier for us to manage the meadows because they do it for us, really. All we have to do is let it grow. <laughs> it's seeding now. Many of the plants have gone over. But within this, you're going to have so many grasshoppers and spiders and bugs and beetles and uh, caterpillars. So it's a very, very rich habitat. All you have to do is stop mowing from the end of March until middle of July, late August. And if you think it looks a bit untidy, mow little paths through it so it looks intentional. So many local people walk through these meadows and do enjoy them and are so pleased that the meadows aren't going to be ploughed and reseeded with ryegrass. This provides a lovely place for them just to sit and just Take time to stare, take time to enjoy what's around you. Let all the stresses of modern life, you know, dissipate. We had an open day here when people came in their droves and so many local people said it was the first time they'd ever really, you know, been in these flower rich meadows. Not all of our members own small holdings or huge areas of land, but every gardener can do something. And here, uh, Ray Armstrong, a long-standing member and very keen wildlife photographer, has allowed part of his lawn on the steep bank to develop as a mini meadow. And then we'll come along in a, a week or two and cut it for him. These would all be weeds in some people's eyes, but they're not. They're all our native wildflowers, which all have a function. Bees, the butterflies, they're all dependent on them. We're lucky we've got a very steep six acre pasture um, and we don't cut it for hay at all. Um, in August or September, our neighbor's cattle come in and they chomp it down. And that is just ideal for that type of steep meadow. I'm Caroline Hanks. I'm the coordinator of Herefordshire Meadows, a group of Herefordshire farmers and smallholders and estates who are all working together to create and restore meadows across the county. I'm John Wyndham. Mary and I have been farming here for about 33 years. We, we love this place. It's very scenic. And for the last few decades, almost, we've been doing environmental schemes to try and contribute Mary's keen to put a wildflower meadow into this bit of ground, more or less the way it was before. What's happening here is that we're able to work with the farmer who wants to create the meadow and look at the suitable sources of seed in nearby fields, put them in touch with other local meadow owners. Now we've got several bags of seed here, which is what was harvested from the site in Hoffwood, Plant Life's Jones Hill Reserve. Mary came and collected it and brought it back to the barn here and it all has to be laid out on huge ground sheets and then turned and dried and this is what's ready for spreading on the meadow we saw earlier. You can imagine what Mary's field is going to look like when it's got 30 different species in it. It's going to be quite transformed. 
people get to actually meet others who've already done the work. It's all happening very locally to them. They get to see it warts and all, the things that work, the things that don't work. They're not just having to read ideas from a book or, or a website and they can actually just go around and see what's happening and then go back to their own place and come up with a tailored plan for their own meadow. So I get a sense of achievement in having various field margins and so on set aside for environmental schemes and hopefully people can enjoy it. It's the peace and it's being in the moment. You're looking at things, you're not worrying about anything and you're just there. You have actually just got to be still and take it in. I think what our members are finding is having lots of different plants in their swards is really, really great, not just for wildlife, but also for their livestock and is giving them a way of producing food for their stock in a more efficient and uh, cost-effective way for the, that's really fit for the, modern, for the modern age. All right, let me put the kettle on. Hang on. We've got to manage, restore and connect up. We don't want little islands of biodiversity. We want biodiversity be spread across the landscape. That diversity, that wonderful you know, variety of wildlife, it just sort of makes my existence worthwhile.